Hello and welcome to the Modern Mainframe video cast where we talk about transforming your mainframe applications using DevOps. And I'm joined by Tim Saradsky and Tony Anter, both from BMC. How are you guys doing today? Happy to be here, Eric. Today I want to talk about CI CD pipeline. Tony, CI CD pipelines have been used quite effectively with uh, distributed environments. Why is it important that we include the mainframe in our CI CD pipeline process? I mean, I think you said it at the beginning, they've been used quite effectively on the distributed side. They've automated your ability to go from dev to QA to test to production and you know nothing in between. They've created those super highways to allow you to go straight from A to Z. Mm. And now you're bringing that same level of automation and sophistication onto the mainframe. It's a natural fit. Mainframe is just another platform, just another box in your data center. So there's no reason you can't automate and highlight, uh, transform the way you deliver solutions onto that. Okay, so Tim, what are some of the special challenges that might come about when you're doing CI CD for the mainframe? The first thing you have to remember is the mainframe is an automation platform in and of itself. That's what the mainframe does, that's what it's, it's really, it's, it's reason for being is mm -hmm. it's the best, one of the best mainframe or uh, automation platforms going. The trick is being able to take that sure. value and tie it to the automation platforms that you find in CICD pipelines and mesh those. And that's a people and process and culture shift as much as it is a technology shift. And being able to expose those capabilities in a graceful way. That's why we focused on building things like RESTful APIs and webhooks, yeah. mm -hmm. the connectivity tissue of DevOps and working with the community on being able to pull that together versus trying to create everything for ourselves and offer it as a complete solution. DevOps is a community that works best together and by taking advantage of all the strengths of all of that, taking that message and, and building that into the mainframe culture is really showing huge benefits. So what are some of the strategies that you've recommended to your clients mm -hmm. for CICD adoption for the mainframe? Understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. Have a very clear picture of that. Sure. Modernize the developer experience that you that you ask your developers to work yeah. in. You've got to give them the, the base framework to be able to work with it. And then to start to, to chip away at some of the really, the, the, the things that have been built up over the years from right. a cultural standpoint, because the mainframe's a fail never environment. So we've built a lot of strict structure into it. So things like source code automation and being able to, to manage your source code in a more graceful way with parallel development, putting testing practices in place that right. allow you ultimately then to automate the r routine testing so that your, your people can focus on really what counts, which is the quality, but some of the really tough problems you fix a lot of the where the constraints are, you fix the problems, and that frees you up to then focus on more problems and, and it's a phased approach over time because everybody's on a journey and everybody's mm -hmm. at a different point in that journey. You can't come in with one size fits all solution mm -hmm. in this right. space, it just doesn't work. It's going to be different for everybody and everybody's at a different stage of where they're at. So you have to be able to meet people where they are. Right. Well, Tony, right before you uh, came to uh, BMC as a DevOps evangelist, you were working for a Fortune 100 uh, credit card company doing this very thing. So what are some of the strategies that you employed there at that organization? I think that Tim hit it on the head when he talked about people, process, and culture. If you don't change that, if you don't get that groundswell of, of, of adoption, that, that, that explorer mentality, then it's going to be a very rough road. And I think what, how we approached it was we took, we, took, we, took the, we took on doing it from two directions. We did top down, yeah. so we had to get that management buy-in. We had to get management to come in and say, yeah, this is something we want to do. This is a strategic initiative, but we're going to do this, but also bottom up. We didn't want to just push this onto our developers and push this onto the teams and you know force them kicking and screaming into something. So we took that, hey, let's get some pilot teams, let's get some passionate explorers, let's get them involved and get them excited about what we're doing and then have that groundswell while at the same time have that mandate from on high that said, this is the strategic direction we're going to go. And by, by approaching it from both 
directions, mm -hmm. we were really able to, to gain a lot of ground, a lot of ground quickly, a lot quicker than I'll be honest, I expected it to go. Cool. To add a little bit to that too, the, the, the key with a lot of that is to be able to identify the metrics that show you yeah. how you're being successful yeah. each step of the way yeah. so that you can then use that to reinforce and help the people that may be a little nervous about it, right. but then all of a sudden they realize, wait, this is working better. I'm getting more productivity. And they, and it, that's a real convincer as well. So yeah. baking your success metrics yeah. into your journey and understanding what the, the score is each step of the way helps on the top from end the and the bottom from end, the you, but beginning. you gotta bake it in from the beginning. Yeah. You have so, to baseline it and then keep that continuous measurement, that continuous capability. And the thing is, you're never gonna be done. That's the other thing. If right. I could highlight any one thing, you're never going to be done. You're gonna get better. You're gonna yes. be more mature. You're gonna get an operation that's, that, that's gonna be a lot more sophisticated than you were. But as soon as you feel like you're done, that's when you need to go back right. to the beginning mm -hmm. and make sure and, and keep tuning, keep working, keep whatever. It's never gonna stop. Right. So Tim, take us home on this discussion. Okay. Um, where does automation fit mm -hmm. into this whole process of CI, CD pipelines that include the mainframe? Sure. So what you have to think about with automation is it's a more reliable time-saving mechanism to be able to handle the routine things. You, you exceptions, you want to put quality gates in place that are automated, but it can flag if there's a problem yeah. that you can have the man jump in and deal with the problem. But if there's no flags, if there's no problems, then you want that to flow through as rapidly as possible. There's no physical way to do things like some of the companies that you'll hear talk here about rolling 6,000 changes a day into production by having anything but automated processes. Yes. You can't physically do it, but you can't, in a mainframe sense, fail never. You can't, in a mainframe sense, allow that to happen without automated sure. quality, automated testing, and so on. So you have to look at each part of that and devise the ways to automate it. You, and you can't start from zero and go full bore into, oh, I'm gonna automate my entire factory day one. You have to automate bit by bit, piece by piece at the constraints. Yeah. And, and you know that's why the whole DevOps strategy really works because you're building the connective tissues as you go. So you're building the APIs and the webhooks that allow the best of breed products to work together. And then you can incrementally grow that. Mm -hmm. And that's really why automation is, it, it's, it's sort of like, you know, saying, hey, I got to learn to drive to, to win the Indy 500. Yeah, you do. You know, there's there's certain core skills. It, the Indy 500 isn't just about driving, right. but it's a core skill. It's just like, like this. It, a transformation like that is the definition of agility. You start with small iterative changes and you build on that. You start with your pipeline. And then to, to Tim's point, you put in scanning, you put in automated testing, and you're not going to be 100% code coverage day one. You're going to yeah. be probably 5% code coverage right. day one. But you build on that. You, you iteratively get better as you go along until you get it. And it you should be automating everything. If you're going into this with the idea that I'm gonna put a bunch of manual checks in place, mm -hmm. then frankly, you're wasting your time. Yep. You need to be, put those checks in place and when, then when you figure out that they're no longer needed or you feel comfortable, remove them, right? Remove mm -hmm. them and automate everything, automate testing, scanning, change management, compliance, security. It's all there, automated baby. Automate, automate, automate. Yep. All right, well I want to thank you both for your outstanding insights on CICD pipelines for the mainframe. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us for the Modern Mainframe.